Hello, you're listening to the Psychopharmacology Institute podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Regdan Rashad, and this is a show that aims to help you, the mental health clinician, stay sharp on psychopharm. Today will be a brief one, even though the topic is pretty humongous, and that is managing cognitive symptoms in depression. For those who have worked in the outpatient setting in particular, we come across patients who complain of slowness of thinking, inattention, and forgetfulness. I don't know about you, but it can be quite tricky finding something that will help. Today, we have Dr. Jim Phelps reviewing a paper that was published in 2019 in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry by a team in Toronto, Canada. They review agents for cognitive enhancement in depression. Take a listen. Next, let's look at an article with a very tempting title, but I'll warn you, the results are disappointing and yet Interesting. So the title, The Potential Procognitive Effects of Modafinil in Major Depressive Disorder, a Systematic Review. Well, here are the results. It turns out that there weren't enough studies for a good meta-analysis on this topic, but I thought the authors provided us a very useful literature review that I'm going to summarize. So first of all, antidepressants effects on cognition. This would be in major depression, and then you look at cognitive function. Well, vortioxetine even has an FDA indication for this. But when I saw that, I thought, you know, this looks like going for a niche in order to market because you're trying to compete your way into the serotonergic antidepressant tight market. And sure enough, most of the authors of both the two papers that they submitted to the FDA and got their indication, most of the authors worked for the manufacturer. So between that and the expense of this agent and the fact that it's not been shown to be better than anything else in this respect, I kind of dismiss vortioxetine in this role. And then duloxetine has two studies that show a improvement in cognitive function. Kind of looked to me like maybe duloxetine was thinking about going for an FDA indication. But one of the articles on this subject is by the authors are employed by Eli Lilly. The other article by Dr. Herrera Guzman and colleagues, it's not associated with the industry, but they found that duloxetine and other SRIs were equivalent on attention and executive function. So basically no advantage of duloxetine in the study that wasn't industry connected. And then there's desvenlafaxine, which has an open trial, but no control group. And then bupropion and escitalopram, In another study, they were both associated with equal improvement in cognition. So in general, it looks to me like anything that is an effective treatment for depression is likely to improve cognition as well. Well, what about stimulants for depression as monotherapy? There is a literature on this, and Roger McIntyre and colleagues reviewed it and found that, sure enough, there are supportive data for dextroamphetamine, methylphenidate, and listexamphetamine. But overall, they found the studies were poor quality, and they said we should leave the question open about whether stimulants can be effective as monotherapy for depression. And don't forget the FDA caution, one should not combine listexamphetamine with SRIs or SNRIs due to an increased risk of serotonin syndrome. But modafinil, there are multiple studies showing efficacy as monotherapy for depression. But the problem is side effects are frequent. 34% of patients, for example, got headache in trials for narcolepsy, and 10 to 30% got insomnia in trials for major depression. 10% had nausea. So it's not an unmitigated panacea. I wouldn't think of jumping to it in lieu of an antidepressant in major depression, for example, although one could consider it. But Since modafinil clearly improves cognitive performance in non-depressed subjects, you start thinking, you may have thought about trying it yourself. Things like reaction time, reasoning, attention, learning, planning, decision-making, all have shown benefit from modafinil in non-depressed subjects. So this brings us finally back to the authors of the review, this new review that found not enough data for meta-analysis. So they wondered, could the cognitive benefits show up when modafinil was used in major depression? And they found the evidence too scant to really conclude anything. So in summary, there are a few studies on modafinil's effect on cognition and depression, but not enough to do a meta-analysis. Nevertheless, 
I hope you found this little literature review useful. I did, bringing me up to speed on some of these newer findings. And overall, it reminds us that modafinil has a potential role in the treatment of depression, either as an adjunct or as monotherapy. And that is a literature we're not examining directly here, but we should be aware of. Excellent. Thanks, Jim, for that great review. Let's round it out now for the key points. Modafinil has been shown to improve cognition in non-depressed populations. Modafinil has a potential role in the treatment of depression, either as an adjunct or as monotherapy. The FDA approved vortioxetine for cognitive dysfunction in depression in 2016. Some evidence points to duloxetine and other SSRIs being equivalent in efficacy regarding attention and executive function in depression. About amphetamines, it is still open about whether stimulants can be effective as monotherapy for depression. Remember, Lysdexamphetamine should not be combined with SSRIs or SNRIs due to an increased risk of serotonin syndrome. Do you want to hear more about Dr. Jim Phelps? He has his own podcast on our platform called Quick Takes, where he discusses psychiatry research hot from the oven. Check it out on our website, PEIUpdates.com. We also offer CME and SA credits. You can also choose to join our newsletter to receive weekly updates delivered straight to your inbox. If you have a clinical case you'd like to share and hear it being discussed by experts on the podcast, email me your case at podcast at psychopharmacologyinstitute.com. Thank you. The following people participated in this episode. Dr. Flavio Guzman as a general editor, Andy Rode as the audio engineer, Pamela Gonzalez as the project manager, and myself, Dr. Regdan Rashad as the host. We'd also like to thank Dr. Jim Phelps for being with us. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. Until the next episode, goodbye. Goodbye.